Sean Colgan here from Operations Training and Safety. Today we're going to go over the electrical systems on the rigs from the station itself that's going to supply the rigs all the way to the apparatus electrical safety and all the way to the apparatus chargers. We're here at station 43 today and we're going to go over the breaker system that supplies the rigs with the power for the charging. So here at the station they have six different drop lines for the vehicles here in the app room. So all that power comes from the actual breaker panel itself. These systems themselves are 20 amp dedicated breakers for each of the reel lines. So these are some of the things we're gonna be wanting to check. Number one, know where your panel is and know which breakers supply the rigs. If for any reason you're coming up and you're having a continual surge in the system and they're popping the actual breakers, then we need to isolate and find out why exactly that's happening. Is it a weak breaker itself or is it something that's going on with the rig? We're gonna follow that line out of the breaker up into the outlet. So up in the outlet up there, there's a few things that we're gonna to wanna to look at visually. Number one, that there is an actual cover over that outlet. And as you can see, there is a cover. We're also gonna to wanna to make sure there's no charring or indications of any type of heat. Some of the other stations will have a GFI, so the ground fault indicator will be up there. And yes, you'll wanna get up there and be able to get up on the truck and you know, check that monthly and make sure that it does trip and it will reset. A couple things that we're gonna wanna check on the cord reel itself is we're gonna wanna make sure that it's operational uh, ready, that you can actually pull the cord down and that it'll reel back in. Um, when you are pulling the cord out, have a visual look at the cord itself, make sure there's no frays in the cord itself no exposed wires. Make sure you don't see any heat that looks like there might be some resistance in the wiring anywhere where maybe it has been bent or crimped. And we're gonna follow that from the top and we're gonna be looking at that all the way down into the second part of that system, which is going to be the pigtail itself. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's secure. We're gonna make sure that all the connections themselves are tight. That means that on this one, there's two screws here that need to be secure and tight. And we wanna make sure that when we actually are pulling this uh, apart, that we don't grab it by the cord. So we wanna, when we're inspecting it, we wanna grab it by the, by the solid part of the plug itself and pull it out. A Couple things we wanna be looking at inside this plug is to make sure we don't see anything that would indicate any heat or resistance. So any charring on this cord itself. We wanna make sure that it is secure, not loose, nothing's missing, or it's not damaged. When we're looking at the plug into the vehicle itself, we want to make sure that we don't feel any heat on the plug. If there is heat, then we might have indication of an issue with the plug itself. With that, we're going to be checking the pigtail the same way. I'm not going to pull it out with the cord, because if I do that, it continually will move those different connection points in here and could lead to issues with the charging of the vehicle. Make sure that the male ends are all secure and tight. Make sure that the screws are secure in the end of the pigtail. Make sure the cord itself is in there tight. On the female end, same way we did on the cord, be looking at the different screws. Make sure that they're tight, they're secure, and make sure that all the connections look good and there's no charging or no heat or no resistance. A couple things that we can do is to remove the cord away from the vehicle so that we don't run it over and so we don't just drop it on the floor that could create issues in the plug itself is we either hang it out of the way or we pull the cord and we reel it all the way in. It's made out of 12-3 wire. It is uh, made by the folks in the service center. They do a heck of a job. So if you have any issues with it, don't try fixing it all yourself. Just call them up. They'll go ahead and send you guys one out. The reason why we have these in line is so that this pigtail will take the brunt of it if for some reason we forget to unplug the rig. If we had the cord line itself plugged in, we're gonna damage this whole cord, which costs a lot more money than the little pigtail to fix. And this is gonna do a lot more damage if it's going down the road uh, behind the engine. Using the cord itself, this is what happens. You get, you're pulling the wires out of the connections, you're getting that exposure, and you're starting to get heat and resistance built up. We also talked about having everything not loose and nothing missing. As you can see, and you can probably hear it in the video, 
it's very loose. So what happens there is we get that friction and we get intermittent on and off power on the rig itself. So now we're going to be plugging the shore power into the actual rig itself. Make sure that actually the door is secure, it opens and closes, so we keep all the water and weather out of the actual system. We're going to be checking the meld plug in the same way we did um, on the cord itself. So make sure that there's no damage, there's nothing loose in there, that you don't see any type of heat checking on any of the terminals. So when we plug this in, we're going to want to look over on our onboard charger and make sure that we are plugged in and the charger is actually operationally working. So we're going to plug it in, all the way in. I look down here at the charging system itself. It's flashing. It's showing that we're in charging mode and we have a green light in the battery status that's showing a full battery and the um, system is actually charging itself. There are a few different types of charging systems that you'll have on the rigs. So this one might not be the charging system that you have on your rig. And that's when you're gonna need to go ahead, locate your charging system, and it should be pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna tell you the battery status and that it's green and it's charging. If you have any questions or any issues, call up the shop and have them walk you through that. Now that we have the shore power hooked up, in that we've indicated that we are charging. We want to go ahead and shut the battery switch off and we want to make sure the ignition switch off also. We ask these vehicles to do a lot of things. We have our personal um, charging systems on with our iPhones. We have the battery packs. We have the iPads and so on. So we want to make sure that we give the vehicle time to be able to charge up the batteries itself. This is obviously one of our newest uh, trucks out here with uh, a very complex system and uh, for the comm. And we need to keep, um, keep in mind that these systems are designed to vent. This system actually behind the box um, is a different types of comm equipment and gives off a lot of heat, especially if we don't have um, any ventilation for the, the comm equipment. So the door itself, we don't want to be hanging anything on front of the door. As you can see, it's louvered to be able to vent here. On the uh, window side, there's also uh, louvers to help vent and on the cowling side. So keep that in mind. We don't want to be shoving our flak jackets, any of our personal equipment around these. We want it to be well ventilated. When we open up the door in here, this is not a place to be able to store any of our own personal equipment. As you can see, there's a lot of wires, a lot of voltage and amps going through this. Not a good place to be putting any of our stuff. As a matter of fact, we shouldn't even be in here. We shouldn't even be opening this unless we're directed by comm services themselves. So we're going to talk about some of the other systems that the unit is charging. Um, we're talking about the 12 volt here. Uh, any of the 12 volts that you have on your rig, you should be checking out. Uh, as we all know, they do get loose. And when they get loose, there's only two wires on the back. And if those are loose and those are actually hitting any of the metal of the vehicle, it's going to start grounding out. So we want to make sure that we're checking these systems. Um, I know we've all been in rigs where we've pulled out the 12 volt um, cigarette lighter portion of it and the whole uh, actual electrical um, portion of it pulls out with it with the wires that are connected behind. So we need to make sure these are secure. We also, for some reason, put these next to uh, water and drink holders. So we want to make sure that water's not splashing up onto the electrical because as we know, electrical and water do not like each other, not good for us. So make sure that all the 12 volt systems that you check out on the rig, they're plug in, they're secure, they're not loose, they're not creating any resistance or any heat. So um, while we're talking about that, personal phones, personal iPads, uh, you wanna make sure that some of those 99 cent store chargers, they're not the best to have. So if you're having those plugged in the rigs, keep an eye on those and make sure that um, they're not heating up. If they are, you need to get rid of them. Also talking about that, when we talk about leaving um, things on the charger, uh, do not leave your phones and your personal stuff plugged in overnight, okay guys? You wouldn't want to do that in your own car, so don't do it in the vehicles here at work. We have our battery for the HTs. Make sure that it's charging correctly, that you have a green light, 
um, when it's plugged in, make sure that it's secure, not loose or damaged. Same with the six gas. If you have one on your rig, make sure that it's charging and it's secure and it's proper. Um, also, uh, we have the iPads, we have other radios. You need to check everything out the same way, guys. We're just checking to make sure everything is working properly, that um, you don't see any wires that are chafed, uh, you don't see any heating, any type of resistance, and that um, if there is any issues, then you need to obviously take that portion of it out of service, write up a VRR, and get it fixed. For our own safety, uh, let's make sure that the smoke alarms in the app room are working properly and that all the doors, the fire doors that lead in and out of the apparatus room are closed securely and that we don't have any door stops leaving that gap. If you guys have any concerns or questions or comments, please call us in the training section. Thank you, Sean, for sharing that information with all the crews. I'm gonna cover some other information. I'm Don from Fleet Services. We do suggest that you take more time to look at your unit, make sure that everything's secure, go underneath, look at the frame rails, underneath the differentials around that so no wires get caught in the U-joints, any of the suspension, and um, it's all secured properly. This will minimize our out of service time. We would like you to check the frame rails where wiring harnesses are attached and make sure they're secure. We recently had a unit that the tie wraps came loose and it was rubbing on the clamps right here. And what causes that is a vibration with the engine and it causes the electrical wires to rub and chafe and short out. You'll see on this, we have some touching the trans over here that need to be repaired. During your checkout, if you see this occur, we'd like to see it secured and write a VR that you have some chafing wires. If it's something you can't do in the field, let us know if it's shorting out or you find that um, it needs to be protected with some insulation. One of the other problems we find with the CAD and the MDC and um, even starting of vehicles is loose battery cables. Down here is a, a battery that's easier to get to. Some of our type 3s are harder to get in and look at the cables, but you want to make sure they're tight at the terminals. So um, what we find a lot of times is one of the ground or the positive are loose on the terminals causing uh, radios or some voltage problem in the vehicle, not charging, not starting sometimes. And we get these phone calls and we go out there and it's a simple fix that you could do in the field and probably resolve at your station level and uh, stay in service without any, any downtime. Some of the things to look for on the batteries, are they dented, smashed, did somebody leave a tool on them and maybe get them damaged when you close the cab up? Also corrosion on the connectors and are the connectors tight and are the batteries leaking? If they're older batteries with fluid, you take the caps off and inspect and see if there's fluid showing or you can see the top of the battery plates inside. And is there bulging on the side or is there a bad odor like rotten egg smell coming from the batteries? That's usually sulfur burning on the plates. That's a sign of the batteries going bad. And with that, write it up on a VR and we'll take care of it. What I have here today is uh, some clamp that shorted out on a cable, a battery cable, and the tie wraps that weren't on here on that vehicle. And because of that, it rubbed through and shorted out on the cable, causing this cable to melt. An engineer caught this and kept the unit from further damage, it minimized the repair to get it back in service. A lot of times we get phone calls, my unit's not charging. So one of the things we'd like you to do is a kind of a field assessment. Is it charged while it's at the station when you leave the station? So the shore power is charging. And then when you start driving, is it charging? And then you get a dead battery after on scene running code three. That's important because then we know the alternator is failing or is it just not cranking over. So that's some of the field diagnostic when you call or write a VR. Those are some of the things you could be detailed in the information. One of the calls we get a lot of times is my vehicle's not charging going down the road. The first thing we're going to do is ask if you check the belt on the alternator. Up here is the alternator. We'd like you to check the belts on all the units. You should be checking that daily, making sure the belts are on the units. For the fan and for the alternator is important for that vehicle to run down the road safely. 
So we'd like you to check the wiring on the back of the alternator when you tilt the cab. Check the wires on the back, make sure they're not rubbing, chafing, or broken. So if you have a failure, those are some of the things you want to check or the CAD's shutting down on you. So those are some of the things you can quickly check at the station level and help us be more prepared to fix your equipment when we get out there. With all the trucks, we have uh, rechargeable battery packs for different uh, rescue devices. While those are charging, we'd like for the unit not to be over committed on the voltage. Kind of minimize what we're putting in that compartment to only essential stuff. On the chargers with those battery packs for that rescue equipment, try not to store anything that's flammable next to it that holds in the heat that causes those battery packs to overheat. That will extend and help improve on the charging on it and also reduce on risk of fire for those components in there. We also have 12 volt outlets and we have the 110 that charge when it's in the station and also when the generator is running. So on these trucks that need power, make sure we don't overextend the unit so we have issues when it's charging at the station. With that, if you need any repairs, feel free to write a VR in detail and we'll get to your repair as soon as possible. Thank you for uh, taking time to repair your vehicle in the field, loose screws, wires, and those type of items. If you need any of those parts that we can assist you with, and if you need any tie wraps or anything like that, contact parts. If you need some assistance with PM, tires, or light vehicles, that's Joe Vieira. If it's anything heavy related, out of service items, feel free to contact me, Don Friedline. Thank you for taking time to watch this video on training for fleet services for how to check out your unit for electrical items.